Men and women, once they say لبيك اللهم عمره, now they commence into a sacred condition where there will be certain things haram to do. And if you were to violate them, there will be a ransom, an expiation, and you will have to fix this problem. So what is sacred? What is forbidden? What is to be avoided during the state of ihram? Let's begin with men because men have certain uh, restrictions extra more than women. Whenever <clears throat> a woman wants to perform ihram in her regular everyday clothes, but make sure the full hijab in which you're able to pray. So some sisters wear hijab but it is loose and it falls back and it shows some of the hair that nullifies ihram because it does nullify the prayer. Look at this uh, respected sister. Look at the lady. This is an enough hijab to wear if you are in a state of ihram. Look at me. I'm wearing open sleeves, not with cuffs. Women are not supposed to wear something like that because now when you start your tawaf and you say labbaik Allah or you say bismillah pointing to the black stone, what is this? This is for women, not, for, not, not permissible. This is forbidden. It needs to be covered. So you wear cuffs or a rubber pan around it in order to not to show but the face and the hands to the rest. Like you're offering your prayer. Your clothes are loose. Your clothes any color. As long as they're loose, they're not tight, not to reveal any details of the body, and they're not see-through. And the hijab, likewise, is wrapped around the head properly. It doesn't show the neck. It doesn't show uh, some of the hair and so on. He said, لبيك اللهم عمرة or حجا We said in the case of men, the restrictions are extra than women. It is restricted to wear any stitch clothes, including undergarments, no underwear. Can I wear kofi? No covering the head for men in a state of haram is forbidden. Haram. So what about uh, wearing sandals which have stitches? That is different. We're talking about clothes or something that was tailored to fit. But the ihram itself have stitches. It is okay. The ihram outfit, the towels. You have two pieces. Rida and izar. The izar is a towel that you wrap around your waist like a skirt as if you're coming out of the shower. And the rida, another towel, you put it on both shoulders. Sometimes we see men showing the right shoulder. Is it like they're showing the muscles? What is it? And when do you do this? You do that if you're entering Mecca and doing Tawaf al Qudum for the first time. Yani, it is not once you make the Ihram. No. When you enter the haram and you're about to do your very first tawaf, which is in as tawaf al qudum, bismillah, and you uncover the right shoulder, and then everything else is covered. Only the right shoulder. And once you finish the seven rounds, please cover up both shoulders. And it is not permissible to pray in this condition. And then in Arafah, in Mina, in every other situation, even in Tawaf al Ifada, both shoulders will be covered. It's only in the very first tawaf, which is known as tawaf al-qudum, or the arrival tawaf, which in your case, it will be the, the tawaf for umrah. So we said for men, it is not permissible to wear any stitch clothes, nor to cover the head. What about carrying an umbrella? Is this forbidden because it's also covering the head? No, we're talking about an object which becomes attached to the head but an umbrella, the tent, the uh, roof of the car or the bus, all of that is permissible. With regards to women, there is some extra restrictions that men do not have. Like, in the case of women, a woman who's wearing niqab, a face veil, in a haram, she's not supposed to cover her face. She's not supposed to cover her hands up to the rest. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, لا تنتقب المحرمة 
ولا تلبس القفة زين. A Muslim woman who is performing ihram should not cover her face nor wear gloves. But men would get to see my face. There is something called isdal instead of the niqab. It doesn't touch the face. And you keep your hands beneath your khimar. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was covering her face. But whenever she was around women in ihram alone, she would have to remove the face veil because this is restricted during ihram. But whenever she's surrounded with men during tawaf or during sa'i, she would lower the isdal. The rest of the restricted acts which apply for both men and women during the state of ihram, number one, it is not permissible to remove any hair from the body. Whether the beard, the mustache, the hair, or the eyebrows, or never. You do not remove any hair from the body. This is for both men and women while in a state of ihram. And it is not permissible to have an intimate relationship with your spouse so long as you are in a state of ihram. Nor the foreplay which may lead to that. So kissing, hugging, avoid all of that. Like you're fasting exactly until you remove your ihram as we will be discussing insha'Allah. And also it is not permissible to process a marriage contract either for yourself like if you are the bride or the groom or for others as long as you are in a state of ihram you should avoid that and it will not be valid. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith إِنَّ الْمُحْرِمَ لَا يَنْكِحْ وَلَا يُنْكِحْ لَا يَنْكِحْ وَلَا يُنْكِحْ Yani he or she do not get married while in a state of ihram and should not be given in marriage while in a state of ihram. Another restriction which is hunting, catching the game. We nowadays go by the plane and then from the plane we take the train or the bus to the manasik but we're talking about in the past. They used to travel on the back of camels and caravans which will take a month or more. So on the way they can catch a deer, they can catch a rabbit, they can... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Ma'idah, أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَحْرِ وَطَعَامُهُ مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ وَلِلسَّيَّارَةِ وَحُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ صَيْدُ الْبَرِّ مَا دُمْتُمْ حُرُمًا Fishing is okay, but if you are in a state of ihram, it is not permissible to hunt the game. And if you do, there will be a ransom, an expiation, and you cannot taste the meat of the game that you hunted. This is restricted during the state of Ihram. The beautiful ayah of Surah uh, Al-Baqarah 197, when the Almighty Allah says, فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ When you assume the intention of Ihram, to commence into the act of Hajj or Umrah. فَلَا رَفَثَ A Rafath in the Quran refers to the sexual relations, intimate relationship. But she's my wife. Well, in Ramadan when you're fasting, you do not approach her. لا رَفَث You share the same room. Make sure that you do not actually have an intimate relationship. This is not permissible. A Rafath is forbidden. And it's a major sin, and it nullifies Hajj, and it would have severe, severe consequences if somebody happened to have an intimate relationship with their spouses during the state of Ihram. Wala fusuqa, al fusuq refers to all kind of sins, vain talk, lying, uh, bullying someone, doing something bad, watching what Allah has forbidden. It's all fusuq. You are in a state of ihram. You know what it means? It's a sacred condition. So to the extent that I removed all my clothes and it reminds me like the same day I was born. I don't remember that, but you remember that you've seen many people dying and we enshroud them in sim something similar to that. Which means if you have a tuxedo, if you have an outfit worth a thousand dollars, no need for it. If you wear name brands, no need for it. Two towers. So it reminds you of the day that you will be enshrouded and you will go to Allah the Almighty with zero attachment to the dunya. 
they will take off your watch, they will take off your ring, they will take off everything from your nice glasses. Why? Because you're going to bury that person in coffin. So in Ihram, you dress up like you are in a coffin. And accordingly, it is not permissible for a woman to wear any makeup or men and women to wear any perfume or fragrance. Absolutely forbidden for both men and women to wear or touch any fragrance or perfume or cologne while in a state of Ihram. You need to be simple and humble. You need to remember the day that you will be returned to the Almighty Allah. <coughs> And that's why, brothers and sisters, when we perform tawaf, maybe the person right next to me is a minister. Or literally, maybe a multi-billionaire. Who knows? Allah knows. But here, we're all the same. Here, what matters most is piety and righteousness. 